Hello and welcome to the Small School Districts Association Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to hear about six great schools and we're happy that you're taking time out of your day to be here with us. Just a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. You can direct your questions to a specific school or schools by including their name, or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their programs. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is really important. It's your best way to ask the question and make it a little more personalized. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening. So be sure to sign up for more sessions. We also hope you've enjoyed some of our earlier programming as well. This presentation, like all presentations, is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website where you register, strivescan.com SSDA. All right, well, I'd now like to turn it over and welcome our very first uh, school that's gonna kick us off today. And that will be DePauw University. Awesome, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Orlando Ramirez and I'm an Assistant Director of Admission at DePaul. Uh, I've been here for eight years and uh, I'm gonna talk to you about uh, my lovely school. So if you let me share my screen real quick. And uh, all right. Come on, there we go. Okay, so DePaul is a private liberal arts school um, in Greencastle. Actually, Orlando, it hasn't gone to you present or remote, so I just want to let you know. Ah. There might just be a little lag. <laughs> of course. Zoom, right. it always gets us. Yeah, 2020 yeah. and 2021 in a nutshell. Okay, give me one second. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. This is exactly the way I did it yesterday and now I'm worried. Okay, let's see. All right, but you probably see yeah. all. Okay, do you see your faces? I can see, I'm seeing a page that says DePaul with the beautiful old building, 29% okay. participating varsity athletics. Is that where you're trying to be? Yes, perfect. Okay, all right. So, sorry about that. So, uh, Private liberal arts school in Indiana. We are the number one uh, private liberal arts school in Indiana, and we are a top 50 national liberal arts school in the country. Um, a liberal arts education is definitely gonna prepare you for any career you want. Um, and DePauw has done a great job of bridging that academic rigorous environment in your classroom with experiential learning opportunities outside of the classroom. We know you wanna get a job. Um, so we're gonna teach you how to think throughout your life, but also give you the technical skills that you need um, in any career that you want, whether it's accounting or it's in chemistry or whatever it is that you're looking for. So um, as you can see, um, we are, sorry, we are a school of about 2000 students and all of them live on campus all four years. Um, so that makes a great community where students really get to know each other, build those great relationships, not, among, not only among them, but also with the staff and faculty on campus. So with 2000 students, the average class size is gonna be around 15 to 17 students and the student to faculty ratio is eight to one. It just means you have a lot of uh, ownership over your education and you have the ability to not only pick and choose the courses that you want, but at the same time really um, focus in on the things that you need out of your educational experience, whether that is the classroom experience, athletics, school of music, um, or internship opportunities. So speaking of the school of music, we do have a school of music that has about 118 students. Um, and it's a conservatory style school. About 30% of our students are in athletics or are or, or student athletes. And um, we have a really great um, athletic department. We have 23 varsity teams. Our women's basketball team has definitely been uh, divisional champions for uh, two times, which is a really great feat. Um, but uh, I will definitely explain a little later on one of our biggest traditions in athletics. When you graduate from DePaul, you'll actually graduate with a Bachelor of Arts degree in one of our majors. As you can see, we offer 49, plus we have the School of Music as well. Best thing is that you don't need to know what you wanna study when you come to DePaul. In fact, all of our students have until the March of their sophomore year to declare a major. 
Um, so that gives you a lot of flexibility to explore different subjects and truly see what you're interested in. Now, if you have a great idea of what you wanna study, that's great. You can start taking courses in that area from the beginning. So um, in addition to the majors, we actually have four honors programs that really do help you hone in on some areas. For example, the environment, management and business, and also media. And then the honor scholars is just taking liberal arts to the next level. All the fellows programs that you see in front of you actually have a semester long internship um, that is really beneficial to our students. Usually when they come back from that internship, they've been offered a job at that same company. And so by their senior year, a lot of the students in these programs already have at least one offer before they even start classes. Campus life is really dynamic on, uh, at DePaul. Um, there's constantly something going on, whether it is a sporting event, a school of music event, or we have a great speaker that comes to campus. As you can see, Malala Yousafzai is there, and she is just one of many, many world leaders who have come to DePaul uh, through a lecture series we have here. Um, one other thing I wanna bring up is that within our clubs and organizations, and DePaul has had a really great tradition with Greek life. We founded the first sorority in the entire nation, um, and we have two of the longest running fraternities in the country. So about 67% of our students are involved in Greek life, but that doesn't mean that if you don't want it to be a part of your life, that it has to be. So there's no pressure there. Uh, it really is a great opportunity for networking and also leadership opportunities. Um, I think, sorry. So that is the end of my presentation. One thing I want to say about DePaul is that we are open to visits. We are located 45 minutes west of Indianapolis. And in fact, the Indianapolis airport is in between Indianapolis and Greencastle. So it's actually closer to the school. Um, we um, will accept visitors not only during the, the academic year, but also during the summer as well. And so we'd love to have you on campus. We'd love to show you why we're one of the top 50 most beautiful campuses in the country. Um, and uh, we'd love to give you that personalized experience that you would get at DePaul. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Orlando, for presenting on DePaul University today. All right, our next school is going to be Earlham College. Hi everyone, uh, my name is John Wolfgang. I'm an admissions counselor at Earlham College. Uh, I'm just gonna drop in the chat our link to our admissions website. So I cover the West Coast, I cover Chicago and surrounding areas, and I cover New York. So I have a pretty broad uh, territory. In terms of what I cover. Yeah, so today we'll just be talking about Earlham College. So Earlham is a small private liberal arts school located in Richmond, Indiana. When we say small, we mean small, right? We have about 800 students and it's entirely undergraduate. We have um, the Earlham School of Religion, that's a separate entity that has master's candidates, but there aren't PhD students here. There aren't like master's students here. We are focused on educating our undergraduates. We were originally founded as a Quaker institution, so we still carry those Quaker principles with us. For instance, everyone on campus uh, goes by their first name. We don't use any titles. And we find that's really beneficial to fostering relationships on campus, really making sure that there's a personal connection between you and your professors because you aren't calling them Professor X, you're just calling them by their first name. Um, we have a really wonderful uh, student body. 25% uh, of our students are domestic students of color and another 23% are international students. That international student population from year to year, anywhere from number one in the nation to top five in terms of percentage amongst all liberal arts colleges, right? So you really do get a unique experience by coming here, really these wonderful global influences from the community. This is a list of all the majors and minors we have. We also have something called applied minors. So applied minors are really unique. They help students customize their education in terms of really digging in to a subject. So for instance, we have one called anthrozoology. So you look at human animal relations, but through uh, biological lens and sociological lens and anthropological lens, right? So you really get to dig into one subject from a lot of different uh, viewpoints. And we find that's really helpful, especially in kind of the liberal arts context of broadening your ways of thinking and just kind of challenging students to think differently about problems. Some of the really popular programs that we have in general, anything related to pre-health here. So, right, uh, biochemistry, neuroscience, our med school placement rate is over double the national average. And in general, we're in the top 2.5% amongst uh, all institutions in terms of students who go on to attain their PhD. So really anything that kind of is about furthering your education, that's really popular here. 
We also have some really unique programs that kind of come from that Quaker idea, right? Peace and global studies, that's something that's really popular. Environmental sustainability, a big part of the Quaker identity is just being responsible, treating everyone well and having that kind of simplistic mindset. And so, you know, having environmental sustainability, making sure all resources are being used wisely, that kind of goes hand in hand with that. Honestly, the academic experience is even more uh, unique than the academic offerings, I would say. The average class size is 13 students. And that's something that is true in all majors, right? The majority of our classes in any subject you have are gonna be discussion-based, gonna be seminar-based, gonna be lab-based, right? There are gonna be very few lectures, even in the, the most hard of sciences, right? Student to faculty ratio of nine to one. And that's something that is entirely based on professors, right? Because we don't have any graduate students on campus. That means that all your labs, all your seminars, those are being taught by the same professor who is teaching you in lecture. So you're able to connect knowledge in a way that really isn't possible when you have two different people teaching in two different manners. So we're really happy about that. And it also benefits you making that personal connection with your professors, right? And then rank the best classroom experience according to the Princeton Review. Again, just kind of showing all we provide our students. We also understand that it really is important to get that kind of practical side as opposed to the more traditional liberal arts mindset of just being purely theoretical. So that's why we have the Earlham Advantage. The Earlham Advantage is a guaranteed funded internship or research opportunity for every student during their time here on campus, up to $5,000. And that comes with career coaches available to make sure you can talk out where your passions lie and find uh, a practical example that really fits you, fits the budget we're providing to make sure that students can attain their dreams. Um, in addition, kind of having that practical real world experience, we also have a variety of off-campus and study abroad programs. It's important to note that one study abroad uh, whether it's a semester long or a year long uh, program is entirely included within every student's tuition, right? It won't cost you any extra to go on a study abroad program um, for that semester. And so that's really nice to be able to offer students. Again, if they find that it's important for their education to study in China or study in France, we wanna provide that for our students. As far as student life, we have over 60 student life clubs and organizations. And that's a number that because we have such a small picnic community that can always increase if you find people with shared, um, shared interests as you. Um, 17 men's and women's D3 sports, over 50% of our students compete in D3 athletics. And so we find that creates a really healthy culture because you don't have this distinction between student athletes and non-student athletes, right? You always are kind of interacting there. Res life, we are a residential college. You don't have to worry about getting kicked off as a senior because we're trying to make room for freshmen. Um, we have eight residence halls. We have theme and friendship style housing because we don't have Greek life, but we have kind of that shared living and apartment style houses um, that are really more tailored to specific interests. And so that's pretty important as well. As far as the admissions and financial aid process, um, we're test optional, we're test optional. During the pandemic, we're test optional. Outside the pandemic, you never have to worry about SAT scores or something disqualifying you from attending our school. Um, in general, I'd say just complete the Common App. We take the Earlham College application, but it's simpler because a lot of schools use the Common App, so you might have to fill it out. In terms of financial aid, all students are automatically considered for merit scholarships for four years, right? Anywhere from $20,000 to $30,000 a year as well. So it really is substantial what we can offer our students. In terms of endowment for the number of students we have, we're one of the wealthiest institutions in the country. We're richer than two Ivy League schools. And so what that means is that we can put together really wonderful packages for our students. As you can see, 95% of our students receive financial aid in some regard. And all you need to do is fill out the FAFSA to be considered. So this is the contact info. There's my info there. Um, and then there's also kind of the general admissions. Anyone would be happy to answer any questions you have. But otherwise, uh, stay safe and thanks. Thank you so much, John, for presenting on Earlham College today. Our next school is going to be the University of St. Francis. Awesome, thank you. Uh, my name is Erica and I'm an admissions counselor at the University of St. Francis. And if you give me one minute, I'll share my screen with you all. Okay, let's get into present mode. Maybe, oh no. Bear with me. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much it's, for your patience. Good. <laughs> and uh, thank you and welcome to everyone who's joining us. Really glad you can attend. Um, just to give you a brief overview of who University of St. Francis is before I jump too far into it. Um, we are a small liberal arts school um, with our roots in Catholic tradition. Uh, we're based in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We also have a campus in Crown Point, Indiana. Um, we have a roughly around 2,200 students um, in undergraduate and graduate programs here at St. Francis. 
Um, about 1,800 of those are in our undergrad program. So we are a smaller school, um, which like a lot of my colleagues are saying has some great benefits to you as a student. Um, we offer over 60 majors. Um, sorry, I'm, oh, there we go. Okay, okay, wonderful. Uh, so we offer over 60 majors and I'll break some of those down um, and over 30 different clubs and organizations. Uh, because we are a smaller school, our average class size is between 15 to 20 students with a one-to-one -one student to faculty ratio, which is wonderful. Um, and then one of our key values is that we, we want to recognize students as, as people um, and not just academics. So we want to, to cater to the whole person. Um, so emotional, spiritual, and relational health. Um, so we'll jump into the academics portion of, of who we are at St. Francis. Um, we tend to, to lean heavy in the health sciences field. So programs like nursing, physical therapy assistant, surge tech, rad tech, we have a dual accept PA program, health services. Those tend to be some really popular majors here at St. Francis. Um, but because we are a liberal arts university, we also want to offer a well-rounded view um, and a well-rounded education. So we have programs in the arts, sciences, business, um, if you're interested in education, accounting, marketing, graphic design, those are all popular majors, um, but we, we really run the gamut in, in what we offer and we, we try and prepare students for the real world. Um, part of that includes the internship opportunities that we offer. Um, all of our students are guaranteed an internship while they're on campus, whether that be at a local business or we have several minor league sports teams in the area. So working with one of them and their different uh, capacities. Um, and then different programs such as our nursing programs or our biology programs allow students to travel and really get into um, different parts of the United States and the country to put the skills that they're learning to use. Um, we have a 97% employment rate after graduation, um, whether students go on to continued education or are employed or enter the military. Um, and we have a um, an office on campus that is specialized the academic and career center that uh, works to get students in good job placements and prepare them for that next step. Uh, so moving on, we'll talk about student life because that is really important when you're choosing where you wanna go to school, you wanna make sure that it is the right fit for you. Um, as I said before, we have over 30 different student clubs and organizations. And if we don't have one that you students are interested in, then they're more than welcome to start your own. So our students don't get bored too often. Actually yesterday, walking around campus and there was a zip line just set up in the middle of campus. So lots going on. Um, if sports are your thing, we are a NAIA division sports school. Um, so we do have some college athletes on our campus. Um, if you're interested in sports, but maybe on a smaller level, we do have um, over nine different intramural teams as well. Um, and then lots of events going on, like I said, whether that be the open mic nights, trivia nights, we have a murder mystery night every year, um, lots of free food around campus. Um, and we have a lake on campus. So students are able to kayak, they're able to paddleboard, fish, they can take um, one of our motorboats out. So lots of opportunities to, to get involved um, with your friends on campus. Um, and then we also are a residential campus as well. So for students who are interested in living on campus, we do have four different housing options uh, with three different dining facilities and two coffee shops to keep that, those caffeine levels up for late night studying. Um, we do offer free laundry and free parking included with your room and board. Um, so that would never be a worry for our students that's provided. Um, and then each of our dorms have a student lounge area that lounge area is a great place for residential students as well as commuter students to come and hang out. We have pool, um, ping pong, foosball, gaming systems, study lounges. Um, so that's a really good place for our students to collaborate together. Um, and then another great perk of living in the dorm is that you do get to engage in those dorm events. Um, so that's something we really push for is students living on campus and really getting that college experience. Um, I did mention before that we are a Catholic university. Um, we started in the late 18, 1800s as a nursing school, primarily started by nuns, but we have since expanded. Um, but Catholicism is still a part of who we are. Um, we don't require our students to be Catholic, but if they want to participate, we do have mass as well as Bible studies and our communities on campus as well. Um, and then lastly, I'll just touch on where we're located. Um, we're, so we're in Fort Wayne, Indiana, the second largest city in Indiana. 
Um, we're great proximity to Chicago and Indianapolis, Chicago being only a three drive, three hour drive away. So we get lots of students going up there um, for a weekend to hang out. Um, and then the city of Fort Wayne itself, we have a vibrant downtown district, over hundred miles of biking and walking trails. Um, and just, yeah, lots, lots to do to stay busy. Um, and with that, I will turn it back over. Um, and we are doing on-campus visits as well. So please come and visit us. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Erica, for sharing University of St. Francis. Okay, we've heard from three great schools and we have three to go. So um, this is a great time to, you know, think about questions to put in that Q&A button to ask about programs or activities, about schools that, for schools that have presented or for the schools that are still to come. All right, the next school we're gonna hear from is Northwest Missouri State University. How are y'all doing? Uh, I put our um, link to our website as well as my email in the chat. So feel free to check that out there. Uh, my name is Ryan Talkington. I'm trying to get this screen shared. I am an admissions uh, representative here at Northwest Missouri State University, located in the far northwest corner of Missouri. Uh, this is our campus, a uh, very beautiful place to be in the fall and spring. As you can see, there are a lot of trees. We are home to Missouri's Arboretum, so any tree that grows naturally in Missouri is on our campus, more than 1,700 trees and a variety of 160 different species. Uh, it's nice and compact, so it's only a 10-minute walk from end to end. You can get anywhere on campus within those 10 minutes. Uh, just some stats and figures for you. Uh, Northwest is a Division II university, so a little larger at 7,267 students. Um, 5,400 of them are pursuing their undergraduate degree. 1,785 are pursuing a graduate, uh, graduate degree. 12% of our population on campus identifies in the minority. 67% of our students come from in the state of Missouri and 33% from out of the state. Our average age on campus is 20 years old. I like to say that Maryville is in the middle of everywhere, being located two hours from Omaha, Nebraska, two hours from Des Moines, and an hour and a half from Kansas City. Uh, so really in the heart of, heart of the Midwest. Uh, nearly 12,000 residents in Maryville, so a little bit of a smaller town, um, but still being two hours uh, away from those larger metro areas. In the top uh, left-hand corner of your screen, you can see Mozingo Lake. It is an awesome place for students to go out and hunt and fish, as well as be involved um, on campus through our Mo era. Uh, which is a recreational area that the university owns out there that has um, climbings and ropes courses, kayaks and canoes, as well as walking trails. I'd like to go ahead and highlight our 96% placement rate. So 96% of our students find a job or continue their education within six months after graduation. We are rated the best college in Missouri for getting a job. Um, our faculty and staff uh, pride themselves on student success as their number one priority. Uh, so office hours, eight to 10 hours a week, and those uh, faculty are always available um, for you. Again, to highlight that 96% placement rate, uh, agriculture is one of our most popular majors on campus. Uh, the Hubbard Center is home to nearly uh, $3 million of equipment for undergraduate research, as well as the School of Agricultural Sciences. Um, we've grown that program 40% over the last five years offering professional-based learning experiences through domestic and study abroad opportunities, undergraduate research, industry partnership, regional and national conferences, as well as judging competitions. There's more than 120 different majors to choose from here at Northwest. So um, odds are we have what you're interested in and we can get you prepared for your career with that 96% placement rate. There's more than 200 student organizations on campus. Um, awesome place for students to connect with others. Anything from our professional organizations that are major specific, uh, our fraternities and sororities on campus, to some eccentric clubs like squirrel watching, as well as scooter club. So um, a lot of opportunity for students to be involved at Northwest. If you haven't heard of Northwest, you've probably heard of our sports teams. We are very competitive at the Division II level. Um, we've won six national titles in football and go ahead and make it three national championships in basketball, um, adding 2021. Uh, we just won last March. So uh, awesome place to attend those athletic events. They are free for students to attend, as well as any guest speakers or musical and theatrical performances on campus. We have three kind of uh, res halls for our students, as well as some academic living communities that are located in different buildings but these are the most popular ones. So the high rises are the most affordable option on campus. Franken Hall is a newly renovated high rise, um, features movable furniture as well as private bathrooms. Uh, Hudson and Parent is the most popular res hall on campus. About a third of the freshman class will live there. Um, 
pod style layout. So eight to 10 students will share uh, one restroom. We are a super score university. So if you take the ACT multiple times, uh, we take the highest score um, of, from all the different subsets. So math, science, English, and reading uh, to create a new composite score to open you up for more scholarships. Speaking of scholarships, these are our merit-based scholarships. So for students from in the state of Missouri, as well as out of the state, these will apply um, based off of your GPA and ACT. For example, a student with a 325 and a 23 on their ACT will be eligible for a $2,000 scholarship renewable for all four years. Um, Bearcat Advantage is our out-of-state scholarship. We'll also stack with that merit-based. So the same student with a 325 and a 23 on their ACT um, will actually waive 100% of your out-of-state tuition and fees which is pretty awesome. Multicultural scholarships available as well, um, working off that same GPA and ACT scale. Northwest provides fully loaded laptops in all of your textbooks for our students that say $7,200 over the course of four years. Those laptops are fully loaded and fully insured, so they'll have everything for you to be successful as a student, as well as if anything goes wrong with that computer. Um, our tech services department, if they can't fix it in 15 to 30 minutes, they will swap it out for a different computer. Um, all your textbooks for the semester uh, will be located in a brown high V SAC uh, in the station, as well as your class schedule will be stapled to that bag. So we'll have all the books that you will need um, for the semester. Again, that saves students $7,200 over the course of four years, an awesome program that Northwest has to offer. Um, I talked really fast. So there is my contact information. Um, again, I am an admissions representative from Northwest Missouri State University, uh, located in Maryville, Missouri. Um, it's a beautiful place to be in the fall and spring with our leaves um, changing colors, as well as um, putting on buds in the spring. You can follow me on Twitter at um, Ryan T underscore NW. I post a lot of stuff about the university and upcoming events that we have to offer. Um, and my email is there as well. So if you didn't get it in the chat, you can go ahead and write that down now. It is rtalkington at nwmissouri.edu. Um, thanks for coming to this event today. Oh, we love to tell you about our universities. Uh, we are doing in-person visits going out between the hours of nine and two daily. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ryan, for sharing Northwest Missouri State with everyone today. Our next presentation, we're staying in Missouri and we're going to the University of Missouri. Hi, and thank you so much. My name is Toria Schlotzauer, and I'm going to be presenting on behalf of the University of Missouri today, also known as Mizzou. I am your Dallas regional representative, so I live in Dallas, Texas, but I talk to any and all prospective students. Um, I'm definitely going to talk a little bit more in depth about Mizzou today, but again, my contact information will be at the end. Just some fun facts before I get started. We are recognized as the nation's first inventors of homecoming. We're also home to the first ever honors college. We're registered as a botanic garden. And of course, we're a bee friendly campus. So just some fun things to get started. We are located in Columbia, Missouri, um, kind of just a very convenient geographical location, middle of the middle, as we like to call it. We call Columbia, Missouri Como for short. We have just over 116,000 permanent residents in Columbia, so it is your quintessential college town. Um, Columbia itself is a beautiful town, lots of places to eat, shop, different activities going on, events that are hosted by the city. Of course, the campus itself is located in the heart of Columbia, so it's a very convenient location for the campus. If you decide to bring a car, not bring a car, you're going to be successful either way. Just to give you more of a visual of who we have coming to campus, we have over 30,000 students in total enrollment. 23,000 of those students are undergraduates, like yourself, seeking that bachelor's degree. We are one of six public institutions in the nation that has a law, a vet, and a med school on one campus. So even if you're not looking to go into those professions, it never hurts to make friends who are, um, as I like to say. But we do have Tigers coming from all over the state of Missouri. In fact, every county is represented, all 50 states and more than 120 countries. I like to describe Mizzou as a two-in-one institution. So we are the university for Missouri. We were founded as the flagship institution, but we are also that research one institution. What I mean by that is we are in that tier one for research. We're part of that Association of American Universities. There are only 65 other members a part of that. And so it is a great group to help with that research, stay on top, get involved, 
um, and be not just nationally, but internationally recognized. Just to get more of that visual of where we are getting students, I have a map up here for you to show you. We do get the majority of students from the state of Missouri. About 65% uh, are coming from Missouri, but the rest, as you can see, are coming from all over. So those darker gold states, those are our, our top out-of-state feeders there. Notice students you know, coming from California. They're, they're not going for the weather in Missouri. Um, they're going for the academics, the campus itself, and of course, the amazing students. We do have, of course, admission requirements. We are looking for the 17 core classes along with a 24, 4, and 11, 60 on your ACT or SAT. We do not have a preference in which one you take or send, whatever you're good at. If you don't have that 24, 11, 60, I have sliding scales to the left there, but also on our website to help determine how admissible are you to Mizzou. If you are applying for the fall of 2021 or the fall of 2022, we are, option, we are offering the test optional option to apply. You could do so through our application or the Common App. Again, no preference, whatever's most convenient for you. We do offer over 300 degree programs. We're most known for journalism, business, engineering, um, education, anything health related. But like I said, over 300 degrees to choose from and to mix and match with. You can dual major at the University of Missouri. You can get minors and certificates, get involved with academic programs and organizations. And of course, we are part of the Southeastern Conference. So we are big into sports. If you are interested in joining or helping out, I recommend to do so and to support your fellow Tigers. We do have 20 Division I teams on our campus. And of course, like every institution, we want you to get involved and basically build up yourself as a student and as a person. So hands-on learning is huge. You're gonna see that more as you get to know the university. Um, and of course, we would talk about that more as well. We do offer scholarship opportunities as students. So we have what are called automatic. We also have competitive scholarships. And I'm gonna skip on to a really important piece for any out-of-state students listening today. We are one of two of the easiest states to gain residency in. So what this means is that you live in Missouri for 12 consecutive months and follow those four additional steps. Um, so after a year of completing these steps, you become a temporary Missouri resident and you pay in-state tuition. So if you do this your freshman year, you're paying in-state tuition your sophomore, junior, senior, remaining years that you're at Mizzou. And come see it for yourself. We are offering visits on campus. We have visits open up until about June so far, and we'll keep getting those open in this summer as well. If you're not interested in visiting campus yet, um, we do offer those virtual tours, sessions, panels, anything else to get involved with. Here is my contact information. Um, again, I'm gonna put this in the chat for you all, but if you have any additional questions, please let me know. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, Tori, for presenting on Mizzou. All right, we're heading to our sixth school. We're going to be learning more about William Woods University. Hello, let me pull up my screen real quick. Let's see. All righty. Um, so, hello, my name is Kaylee Beckstead. Um, I am the admissions counselor for Central Missouri and California. Um, so a little bit about William Woods University. We're located in Fulton, Missouri. Um, it's about 20 miles from Columbia, 20 miles from Jeff City, um, which is the capital. Um, it is a small town. It is in a rural area. So there are things that you can do around campus as well as in town. So we have the Missouri School for the Deaf. Um, which is a big pull for us because we do offer an American Sign Language degree. Um, it's a small town. There's like a historic brick district, um, and lots of local restaurants. So that's a little bit about Fulton, Missouri. Um, so our student population, we have about 3,000 kids. That includes our undergraduate as well as graduate and doctoral um, program. So we are small. Um, our class size, it's about 14 to 15 um, students in a class, depending on what class you're in. Um, so the student to faculty ratio, 13 to one, you have one-on-one, uh, -on -one, very personalized relationships with your faculty, um, which only prepares you. And it's nice once you graduate to have that personal touch with your faculty members. Um, 
So we do have a lot of clubs and organizations on campus. So we have about 54. Um, it kind of differs year to year because students, if you want to bring a club on campus, you can. Um, so that is something if you're interested in. If we didn't have that club, you could bring it to the woods. Um, we are a private liberal arts university. Um, like I said, we're profession oriented. So it's all about preparing you for life after graduation. Um, we have over 60 majors and minors. Um, our big majors are the equestrian science degree. Um, so if you're interested in horses, that would be something that'd be a great fit for you. Um, American Sign Language, like I said, and then business and education and biology. And under our biology is our pre-med and pre-vet. So those are our big pools um, for major-wise. Um, and one good thing, since we're so small is if you want to come in and you're like, I want to major in this, this, and this, you can customize your major at the woods. So you have that opportunity if that's something you're interested in. Um, we have students from 35 states and 11 different countries. So we do have students from all over. We are a member of the NAIA Division I Athletics. Um, so you can see a few of our sports teams on the screen. If that was something you were interested in, um, that would be something you could pursue. Um, we do stack academic and athletic scholarships. So if you do receive an athletic scholarship, you will also be receiving your academic scholarship. So different unique opportunities, um, Woods Around the World, that is a program where you basically have the opportunity to study abroad without going abroad for a full semester. Um, so it'd be either your spring break or during the summer. They've been to all the different continents. Um, it's a great program. Um, and like I said, if you can't study abroad for a whole semester, this is a great alternative. If you are interested in studying abroad though for a semester, we do have that as well. Um, we have internships, every student, you have to have an internship to graduate. So you're gonna get that real world experience before graduation. Um, Presidents 2020 is a club where you get to work with the president um, and provide students with unique opportunities on campus. Um, we have the honors program and then we have different plus one programs. So basically this means you would get a undergrad degree in four years and then you'd have one additional year so you'd start master courses um, your senior year and our and our business program education and organizational leadership are those different plus one programs that you can do um, okay so getting involved we have four different sororities alpha chi omega alpha phi chi omega and delta gamma um, we have three fraternities as well phi gamma delta Pi Kappa Theta and Sig Ta Gamma. Um, we have a lot of students involved in Greek life. You don't have to be a part of Greek life on campus. So if that's not something you're interested in, you don't have to do it. 40% of our students are involved in it. Um, it's just a great way to meet new people um, and have a different organization to be a part of outside of just your major or if you're in a sports team or different clubs. Okay, so the LEAD Award, um, this is a scholarship that all students are awarded. So it's $5,000. Basically, all you have to do is participate in different LEAD events. Um, LEAD events can be educational. They could be art reflections. They could be just a group setting where you go out and do something with students. So it's just a way to get out of your room and you get $5,000 for that. So that is something our president has put in place and it's a great thing. Um, so this goes into a little bit more about our scholarships and financial aid. So 100% of our students do get some sort of scholarship. We are merit-based. So that is based on your GPA as well as your test score. Um, we have the honors program, like I said, and the athletic awards. These are our admissions requirements. We have a test optional pathway, um, common app. If you wanna apply that way, you can also scan that QR code. These are just the steps to apply, um, pretty much the same as all universities across. Um, if you wanna learn more, here's a few of our contact information and we're having in-person as well as virtual visits, so. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for presenting on William Woods today. All right, we've reached the end of our six by six portion of the event. We still have a couple minutes and I want to make sure that all of our representatives um, have been able to put info in the chat and that all of our attendees, those watching later, are able to grab that information. So while we're doing that, we're going to do one live Q&A question. So come on back every by one representative from each school back on camera. And um, also just attendees too, that you have a last chance to drop anything in the Q&A for our representatives to answer for you as well. So don't forget about that. All right, well, I'd love to hear from each of you about a favorite um, campus event, program, a tradition, something that's just really meaningful and important uh, or fun for your student body um, to give a little extra insight into that student experience and your campus community. We're going to go in the exact same order that you presented. So we'll start with DePa. And when the representative ahead of you finishes, just feel free to turn on your microphone and answer the question. And we'll go from one through six that way. So Orlando. All right. Hi there. So uh, one of our biggest traditions is the last football game of the season called the Monon Bell game. And it is a really long standing uh, tradition, long rivalry with Wabash College, which is an all male school that's north of us uh, by 40 minutes. It's a huge game for us. We're about 2000 students. Wabash is 900 students. Um, but we get about 10,000 people that come down to the game. I know we're not Mizzou, right? We're never going to have that type of attendance, but it's you're going to feel like you are at a Big Ten school, um, and uh, it is nationally televised. So if you can't actually attend it on campus, you can watch it on Fox Sports, which has been playing on Fox for the past few years. Um, this year would have been the 127th game, but I'm including the Wikipedia page for the Monon Bell game in the chat. So you can check it out. You can also look up some videos about the games. Uh, it really is a great event that every, every DePaul student is looking forward to each year. So thank you. Yeah, so I'm not sure mine technically counts as an on-campus event. That's because uh, it's the 50th anniversary of our outdoor ed program. And every year we run something called Summer Wilderness or August Wilderness. So it's kind of a pre-new student orientation program for students who are a little bit outdoorsy. It's taught at the beginning level, so students aren't gonna die if they don't know how to pitch a tent or something like that. But you go out into the Uinta Mountains and it's 21 days of backpacking and hiking and trekking with fellow first year students. Usually we also offer one uh, canoeing through Ontario, but obviously if it's a border situation, you can't do that this year. So it's a, it's a really wonderful event. Students have a lot of fun doing it and it's three credits, so they don't have to take wellness credit after that. Probably one of the most popular and, and fun events that takes place at St. Francis is at the beginning of the year, we have a fall regatta to try and kick off all of our events that upcoming year and get the freshmen involved as well. So we have boat races on the lake. Um, we have lots of food trucks. And that's when all of the campus organizations are out um, advertising what they what they do during the year. Um, lots of games and competitions. And it's a, it's a good way to get on campus in the fall and, and have fun with your friends. Also, mine's going to be uh, based like football, like Orlando's is. So again, uh, six national titles since uh, 1998 in our in our history. Um, if we win the game that send us, sends Northwest and the Bearcats to the national championship, if it's at home, uh, the students tear down both of the goalposts. Uh, they throw one into Colden Pond, which is a pond on campus here. And the other one goes downtown to the square where it's uh, chopped up with a hacksaw into pieces and you can actually get a, a section of the goalpost. So again, our athletics are super competitive here at Northwest and, and that's a great tradition that we have. Well, I was gonna talk about football, but I'm not going to now since a lot of people did. Um, I'll talk about one of my other favorite traditions. It's called Tiger Walk and then Senior Send Off. So incoming freshmen to signify like you're coming in to Mizzou, um, you run through these columns that you see behind me toward that building called Jesse Hall. And at the end of running through, you get free Bucks ice cream, which is the tiger stripe ice cream made on campus. Um, so it's like, you, you made it, you're gonna be a freshman. It's gonna be exciting, good things are gonna happen. And then senior send off, it's the opposite way. So you run away from Jesse Hall to signify you did it, go out in the world, do great things. So that's my other second favorite tradition next to homecoming. <laughs> um, so William Woods actually has something very similar. Similar. Um, it's called the Ivy Ceremony. So once you come to the woods, you go, we have two lakes on campus. So you go across Junior Lake, 
there's a bridge, you walk across it and it says like you're entering the woods. And then when we graduate, you walk back across it the opposite way and it's like you're exiting the woods. And it's just a fun, both the ceremonies, um, I've participated in both and it's just a fun experience. So that's probably my favorite thing. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing. I love these answers because it just shows something unique about each school and community and all sorts of awesome presentations. And I hope everyone watching thinks, I want to check it out. And they can maybe think about seeing themselves participating. Um, all right. Well, we have reached the end of our time together. Thank you to our representatives for sharing not just those facts and figures, but the passion you have for your campus community. For everyone who's taken the time to watch, whether live or um, after on the recording, we hope you are curious to learn more. Six minutes is real fast. This is just a peek. So we hope that you will reach out, ask questions, and get to know each of these communities more because it could possibly be your future college home. All right. We have a quick survey. When you close your window, there'll be four questions. Uh, they're very fast. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We hope that you'll be signing up and joining us for our last uh, round of sessions for students in this event. Um, you can do that at that same website where you signed up for this one, strivescan.com slash SSDA. And this session, like all sessions, have been recorded and they'll be available in about a week's time. So you can watch this again, share it, or check out more great schools. Thanks again, everyone, for taking the time to be here. We hope that you um, have a wonderful experience, that it's a fun journey to find your future college community. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.